All right, let's start with the digestive system here. Uh, you can appreciate some of these structures that we saw in the respiratory system. This is the hard palate and the soft palate right here. This is the tongue. This region behind the teeth, the, the lips actually, is in front of the teeth, is referred to as the vestibule. And then this is the oral pharynx. Oops, I'm right here. This is the oral pharynx right behind the tongue. And then coming down here is the laryngopharynx which gives rise to the esophagus. The esophagus passes through the diaphragm and drains into the stomach. And there are the regions of the stomach. This is the cardiac region. This is the fundus, this hump, the body here. And of course, the pyloric region here and the pyloric sphincter would be right about here, draining into the duodenum. Notice these folds within the um, stomach. These are referred to as rugi, which give the stomach the ability to expand. Past the pyloric sphincter and the pylorus of the stomach, we enter the first part of the small intestine, and that is the duodenum. You can appreciate the plicae circularis inside of this. This is going to be true throughout the intestine. Now, we go down the duodenum and ultimately into the rest of the small intestine. This upper region here is, the, is called the jejunum, and the lower region is the ileum. So in this model, this kind of pinkish, darker pink is the uh, jejunum, and the lighter pink is the ileum. The term jejunum means empty, and the term ileum means twisted. So, in other words, materials do not stay in the jejunum that long. They wind up in the ileum, and then ultimately anything that's not digested, pretty much everything, goes from the ileum to the cecum of the large intestine at the ileal cecal valve. Um, the cecum then gives rise to the ascending colon, which gives rise to the transverse colon, which gives rise to the descending colon, and ultimately the sigmoid colon, which we do not see a good representation of right here. Next to the, or maybe I should say attached to the cecum also is the vermiform appendix, which probably is a region where we store beneficial bacteria. Now, this is the rectum coming down into the anal canal, and we see an external and an internal um, anal sphincter. The external anal sphincter is for voluntary control. The internal one is for involuntary control, and this basically gives us the urge then to defecate, whereas this is the regulation of defecation. Notice, too, on the large intestine, we have these folds, which we call hostra, again, giving rise to more surface area, among other things. And then this ribbon-like structure is smooth muscle, um, which runs run longitudinally, and this is referred to as the teeny coli. It's one way that you can tell the large intestine from the small intestine. Okay, up here we have the liver. We have the right lobe of the liver, the left lobe of the liver, the gallbladder, of course, and then this is the falciform ligament, which separates the right and left lobes of the liver. We also have two smaller lobes. This is the caudate lobe, right next to the vena cava, and this is the quadrate lobe, sort of framed by the gallbladder and the falciform ligament. The falciform ligament also gives rise to the ligamentum teres, which is the old umbilical cord. We don't see that on the model, but it would be kind of in this area right here.